There is a time and a place to do certain moves in self-defense or just fighting in general if you're defending yourself, right? Um, a suplex or just slamming somebody to the concrete is definitely one that is a time and a place, right? And for some reason, people love to utilize this in school fights. Two kids fight in a hallway, somebody picks you up, just slams you on top of your head. Awesome, works really well, extremely effective. Problem is, majority of the time, kids start seizing out, um, just completely get obliterated, major head trauma. Um, so yeah, definitely not the time to utilize it. Maybe if somebody's coming at me with a weapon and I get behind them, yeah, I'm gonna do whatever I need to do to disable you. And if that means slamming you to the concrete, that's great. We have to understand that there are legal repercussions to everything that we do in self-defense. So technically slamming someone in the head and causing them to seize up because they shoved you in the hallway is probably going to get you in some serious trouble. So instead, I have five takedowns that you can utilize both in sport and street um, that cause minimal damage, but allow you to get to the person to the ground and allows you to control them. And here they are. The first one's gonna be a mat return. This is one that I've always just resorted to. I um, mean, there's a couple variations of this, so we'll show you the one that I do. We'll show you another one if you struggle with this one. But the first one, again, uh, if we get to the person's back, I get a nice tight grip around their front uh, abdomen. And the key with these grips is I have to suck their hips in. I don't wanna allow your partner or your opponent, whoever, to get their hips away from you. So I need to make sure I keep those hips sucked in. Now, for the initial mat return, typically what I do is I pick them up a little bit and I just sweep out the leg. I'm not trying to like, throw them to the ceiling. I just need to get them up a little bit to where I can buckle and we get them to come all the way down. You're gonna get a couple reactions from this. You might get them to go all the way down, which in this case, again, I right away drive my shoulder and hips into it, just get them to flatten out. And then ultimately with all these takedowns, I want them to kind of get flattened out as quickly as possible so that I can resort to some sort of defensive position, such as like a knee and back type situation. You might just buckle their weight a little bit. They may not go down all the way. So maybe I do this and they start kind of buckling and reaching for the ground a little bit. As they come up, we continue to do it. And the idea is, is that you just repeatedly kind of buckle their leg until eventually we get them to flatten out. Now I'll accept both of those because again, especially if we're dealing with like weapons or something, I don't want them using their hands. So instead of them trying to fight the grips or hit me, they're focused on posting it and break falling essentially. Um, that works in my favor. The variation of this, if you're struggling to get here or I just kind of can't like, maybe they're a little bit bigger than me and I'm having trouble picking them up. The side that I would typically sweep, I'm actually gonna take that leg and step in front just a little bit, not all the way in front, just off it a little bit so that I'm kind of covering their hip. And then as I get here, I load up my hip into the leg. Now I can pick them up. Same thing, we do the mat return right away. We get our knee on back control. From here again, I can look to control the situation. Number two is the hip jerk. Now for this one, instead of keeping my grip in the front here, I wanna shift it to where it's right over the hip bone. And essentially what you're gonna do, again, it's in the name, we're gonna double jerk the hip. I'm gonna jerk it once to kind of buckle the leg a little bit. And then as we jerk it again and I drop down with him, that's where we actually gonna go all the way down to the ground. Now when I do this, I need to make sure that I am right above the hip bone. I don't wanna be below it. I don't wanna be on his uh, side. I need to be right at the top of the hip bone. And then from here, I take the same leg, step back a little bit, and just jerk the hip to buckle that weight. So now, as you know, this whole side is essentially weightless. When I go to buckle again, we get them all the way down to the ground. Same thing, drive into them, look to control, look to get side control, whatever position you want to do. Number three is the sit through. From here, it doesn't necessarily matter if I'm my grips in the front or off onto the side. I always kind of tend to resort a little bit over that hip bone area just because I feel like I have a little bit more control here. But the same side that I'm gripping on, I want to sit through with that leg. And again, all I'm going to do is pull those hips in. I'm sitting through. I'm not trying to sweep this leg. I'm literally just kind of sitting my foot out like we're doing a baseball slide. And I'm going to completely fall to this hip as I pull him over that leg. And when I do this, I have to commit. If I kind of like half ass this and I pull him a little bit, but I don't go down, it's not really gonna work. So I have to sit all the way through, hold him. I come all the way up on top. Again, we pressure. So one more time, full speed. You get the nice grip. I get my leg, I sit through, pop up on top right over. Number four is the switch. Really don't know any other name for it, so we're just gonna call it the switch. Uh, if I have these grips, maybe I'm trying to set some of these up. Maybe I'm trying to like, pick them up a little bit. And he kind of starts moving his hips away from me a little bit, right? Now they can do this a couple ways. They can do it this way and like post on my hands, or maybe they're looking to kind of like reach back and post on my legs a little bit. Yeah, trying to like kind of clear that distance a little bit. Either which one of these. Again, if they have grappling experience, they might resort to this one, right? Uh, but if they're just fighting the grips, doesn't matter. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these legs and actually switch them. And as I switch them, my back leg, I'm gonna drop to my knee. And again, I'm pulling them over that front leg. So all together, we're here. I'm gonna switch, sit. Again, pop up on top. Number five is the body lock position, right? Now in this situation, 
You might have started with one of these grips and as you're kind of working this, they decided to reach around and grab it for your head, which leaves this arm exposed. If this is the case, I'm going to immediately look to lock on and get a split seatbelt grip. And then from here, uh, initially, I just want to drive this arm through, essentially like I'm trying to break a stick over my knee, right? I'm driving this arm across this body and we're locking them up. Now, if I want to add a little bit more pressure from this, the front hand, I'm actually going to start pulling up. The back hand, I'm going to start pulling down. So I'm essentially like splitting that grip a little bit. And this adds a little bit more pressure and definitely kind of straightens out the back a little bit more. Now we have two options for the takedown here. Yeah, it's not really comfortable. I'm either going to just pressure in and just kind of literally walk you to the ground here, which allows me to pin the arm completely down to the ground. You can't utilize it. I can let go with one. I've gotten completely locked down and we're in full control. Or two, we use this grip and we just start walking it backwards. Same idea, we take them all the way down to the ground and we fully lock the position. At the end of the day, as much as I love suplexes and just slamming people down to the ground, we do always have to be aware of what the legal repercussions are of our actions. So instead, try some of these takedowns that are a little bit safer for your uh, attacker or opponent, um, but it does allow you to maintain full control once you do hit the ground, um, which again is the ultimate goal when we are defending ourselves. So give them a shot, stay safe.